Viacom Design. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to connect a motion sensor to the Dreamplayer Lite. Let's get started. First, let's review our setup. I've got a motion sensor here. You can get these at just about any electronics store, and just about any kind of motion sensor will work. This particular version runs off of a 12 volts DC. So I have it actually being powered by the Dreamplayer Lite itself via the control output. So I've got the DC power coming in off a power supply of 12 volts, goes to the control output, and then the control output feeds the sensor. And then the sensor goes into the trigger input, and that's how it can tell whether or not to play the sounds. So let's give it a test. Red LED means it's playing. Simple hand wave over, of course, means something's there. So red LED means it's playing. As you can see, it's playing the file right now. Red LED goes off, which means it's no longer triggered. And the way I have this configured right now, it will play to the end of the file and stop. So let's go ahead and give this a try with sound file and everything. This is an example of combining a motion sensor with a dream player. If the file continues to play, then the sensor is still activated. If the sensor is not active, then the file will play to the end and stop. So that gives you a, a general idea, that little audio file there, of how the Dreamplayer Lite and the motion sensor work together. You can do this many different ways using the config file, and let's go take a look at how you can configure these with that handy file. This is what the config file looks like coming straight off of our website or off of a Pricom Design SD card. The section we're going to be focusing on today is the trigger input section. In its natural state, the loop while trigger, high trigger, and no re-trigger will all be deactivated as designated by the pound sign in front of it, meaning that it is deactivated. Here's the trigger input section as it would be set up for our current situation. I have the three main trigger options all activated. First off is the loop ball trigger. This one's pretty simple as you can see in the description of the file. It will loop the track as long as the trigger input is active. Which means if we continue to wave our hand in front of it as I was doing in the video, it will continue to stay active. And if it is still active at the end of the track, it will loop the file around and play it again until the end of the track or if it is still active then it'll loop the track again and so on and so on. High trigger is basically the opposite of a regular push button. When you push the button down then it plays the track. But in our case we need a high trigger and you need this in order to use the motion sensor. No re-trigger means the dream player will ignore triggers until the current track completes playing. If you wanted to you could have this one deactivated meaning that the dream player if you have it activated and then it goes deactivated like the person walks away or you move your hand away and then it goes deactivated and then you wave your hand in front of it again or a person walks up to it or so on then the dream player will fade out of that file so it's a handy feature to have if you need it but basically you can adjust all three of those as you see fit to your current situation the nice thing about these config files is it's fully customizable to your exact situation. There's no one set of guidelines. So you can set it to whatever you want. So there you have it. That's a basic overview of how you use the Dreamplayer Lite and Motion Sensor. This is Steven with Pricom Design. Until next time.